Hello and welcome to Rajya Sabha TV. I'm Tracy Shilshi. And on the big picture today, we're taking a closer look at the developing situation in Spain. The government has said that it would begin the process of imposing direct rule on Catalonia in an unprecedented move to crush the region's independence bid. Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy has said that it would, for the first time in the country's history, invoke Article 155 of the Constitution, a provision that allows the central government to suspend the autonomy of the Catalan Regional Administration. What would these measures be? And does the Catalonia crisis carry any risk for Europe? To help us understand this story better, we have in studio Shiv Shankar Mukherjee, former ambassador, joining us. We have Pramit Pal Chaudhary, consulting editor, a foreign affairs editor at the Hindustan Times, and also Professor Gulshan Sachdeva, who's the, from the Center of European Studies at JNU. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining me here on The Big Picture. Mr. Mukherjee, if I could start with you. Just first of all, how do you assess the developing situation there? Was this on the anvil as you have been watching developments there? And what do you think is going to be you know, the likely developments in the next few days? Well, to answer your last question first, yes. uh, what is going to be the likely developments in the next few days, I don't think anybody knows, okay. not, on, not even the protagonists. Mm -hmm. I mean, the situation is so, uh, so much on tenterhooks, uh, as we speak, in fact. Uh, uh, so, uh, this has been easily the, probably the gravest constitutional crisis that Spain is facing. You know, and it's a relatively young democracy. It was only in 1978, after General Franco died, uh, and his dictatorship got, uh, I mean, was finished, that uh, Spain, uh, you know, uh, organized, uh, promulgated its constitution and became a democracy. And it has 17, uh, what we call districts or states, uh, 17 areas uh, of which Catalonia is one. And uh, from what I understand, the, the, the movement for autonomy or, or something approaching independence or, or, or self-determination, call it what you will, has been around since the 1920s, 1922 or something. But it has obviously gathered steam only in recent years. Yes. Um, so there are, there are uh, I mean, nobody really uh, can assess exactly how, within Catalonia uh, how many are, uh, you know, the, 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 the government of Catalonia says that in the recent referendum, 90% voted for uh, independence, mm -hmm. uh, although the voter turnout may not have been that high. That's right. Just about but, 43 I mean, it's an extremely so. confused situation yes. where you have Catalonia and the government demanding independence, having declared to the government that if they use Section 155 of the Constitution, which you referred to in your report, to suspend its autonomy, then they will go ahead and formally declare independence. The state, in fact, has said that they will go ahead and impose direct rule if that happens. There have been noises coming out of the ruling government in Madrid that Section 155 will be imposed, but, you know, uh, since nobody wants a head-on confrontation and violence and stuff like that, that there may be, there may be options available which are graded, impl you know, implementation of Section 155. Things are up in the air. Uh, mediation by the EU has been ruled out. The mm -hmm. EU itself is scared because yes. you've got separatist movements uh, elsewhere in Europe. You've Absolutely. got Bavaria, you've got Flanders, you've got Scotland. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so as we speak, uh, my, my feeling is that, uh, and, and, and I'm, I'm not basing this on any special knowledge uh, of, of what's going on there, but a, a kind of gut feeling that a, a total confrontation probably will be avoided. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants, uh, you know, another cr crisis affecting um, not just Spain, which is one of the larger European countries, uh, but, but uh, Europe, which is already awash in, in problems of immigration, of yes. Brexit, of right-wing, uh, you know, sort of the right-wing moving up and up in the political spectrum witness Austria recently, mm -hmm. nobody wants another huge headache, yes. particularly with others waiting in the wings with, with similar demands. All right. So, Professor Sachdeva, the answer really lies in what is what measures are going to be taken, you know, when Article 155 is imposed. What, what does it entail? Because, uh, you know, it's pretty vague. It's going to be imposed for the first time. So, no one really knows as to what it would eventually be like uh, on the ground when that is, you know, uh, imposed. Uh, can you give us an idea of what are the measures that we may be seeing? Well, I mean, you know, as you said, this is going to be used first time, if mm. it is going to be used. Yes. 
Mm, it basically means that uh, central government will take over, autonomy would be suspended. Uh, things which are uh, under the control of uh, Catalonia, particularly education, health, police services, a uh, couple of other taxes, they would come under direct control. Mm, but you know, it's more political mm -hmm. rather than actually looking into certain sectors here yes. and there. Now, what what has been happening now for uh, for the last couple of weeks and couple of years, actually, one would say. Now, both sides are trying to, you know, kind of push others, trying to resolve, trying to see the resolve from the other side. Now, autonomy in Catalonia has been up and down for the last hundred years. If you look before uh, the Spanish Civil War, there was a lot of autonomy. Then, uh, during Franco's time, uh, it was suppressed. Mm -hmm. Since then, under different, uh, you know, uh, you know, 70s and then again 2005-06, some more autonomy were granted. Again, it was taken back in 2010-11. Uh, and they already, this was not the first kind of um, unofficial referendum. In 2014 also, they had one referendum, which was also, I mean, they said people have... Uh, now, I think the, what is really is happening is... Uh, what Catalonian leadership is looking, I mean, as they have been saying again and again, that we are looking for some kind of dialogue with the central government. Now, obviously, when you are saying dialogue with the Spanish government, mm. uh, obviously, they are not going to negotiate independence with them. They also pretty know this. Uh, now, Spanish government, so far, Union government has ruled out any kind of negotiation because what they have said is that you have done certain illegal acts which we don't accept mm. because this whole constitution, I mean, this referendum business was uh, never Illegal. officially approved. Yes. Now, in this kind of murky situation, I think what is really they are looking for uh, from the union government, they are putting pressure for agreeing on some kind of legally binding referendum, Now, which of course they do not want. I mean, so far they have given no indication of any kind. Uh, and I think why things have slightly calmed down, I would say, in the last two, three weeks is because uh, what, uh, you know, leadership in Barcelona was looking for some kind of support from some European countries or from EU, which has been clearly ruled out because of various reasons which Ambassador has also mentioned. So now since they are not, uh, I mean, uh, no kind of, uh, you know, uh, help is coming from EU or from any other major European country and even from Russia, all have said that this internal Spanish affair, they have to work out certain solution within the Spanish constitution. Mm -hmm. So what it means is that uh, Catalonian government would be pushing for some kind of legally binding referendum, which perhaps they may not agree, but within the Spanish political scene, I think apart from the, you know, the ruling uh, conservative uh, party, but there are other political parties. Okay. I think behind the scene, there is certain kind of pressure on Spanish government mm -hmm. from certain EU government and also from other political party, parties to find some kind of solution. Now, mm -hmm. what that solution could be? Uh, maybe some kind of talk of uh, further autonomy mm -hmm. for Catalonia, because still it's mostly a unitary government. So maybe in the long term, some kind of federation within Spain. Now, all these are speculations. We do not know anything about this because nobody has really kind of you know, opened these. Okay. But I think both sides would be kind of pushing for this. Now, whether they will make a compromise or actually what mm. the Spanish government at the moment is saying that if you have declared independence, then of course we will you know, uh, you know, uh, I mean, deal with it We will yes. uh, take control of the situation, which in a very vague manner, they, are, they haven't said that, uh, that, you know. Now, I think this will continue for okay. a couple of more days, mm -hmm. and we'll see by tomorrow if actually this happens. Mm. But I think the feeling is that they will try to find some compromise, both sides. All right. Let's just talk about the role of Carlos Puigdemont then, mm -hmm. Pramit. Uh, you know, yeah. he emerged as a hero of sorts after that referendum. Uh, he did speak very uh, strongly, uh, you know, when, when that vote actually came in. Like it was pointed out, he claimed to say that 90% of the people do want independence. Um, but, you know, as the days progressed, we did see, of course, the politician emerge. And, you know, through it all, give us an idea of the kind of role that he has played and even how, you know, his perception has also changed amid those who are actually rallying for independence. 
Yes, well, I think Pujimond was helped uh, by a number of missteps by Madrid. Um, the holding of the referendum uh, that by well, Rajoy should have, if he wanted to stop the referendum from going forward and for Pujimond from getting political momentum, Madrid should have actually intercepted uh, or either pre preemptively arrested the Catalan leaders uh, before the referendum was held. By holding the, carrying out that police action, mm. which was eventually, of course, televised, there's been a wave of sympathy, at least, for the Catalan independence uh, movement, uh, more about the police brutality rather than the actual necessary movement. And as you've mentioned, while he's claimed that 90% of those who, who voted, uh, but the fact is only 43% of the electorate actually came out, so mm. you're really looking at only about 39% of the people in Catalonia actually voted for independence. But the police action <clears throat> as was allowed, gave him the momentum to go forward to the next step, which was to make that declaration of independence, mm. uh, which he then immediately suspended. Yes. Uh, we assume Pujimont is basically <clears throat> positioning, uh, building up these cards in preparation for what he hopes to be uh, a major set of, of negotiations with Madrid. So Rojoy, having made that initial misstep, is now becoming a lot more sensible about how he's handling this. Mm -hmm. So while, in, while, while <clears throat> one is demanded that the Declaration of Independence be, be uh, annulled, uh, but he's more importantly, he's formed an alliance with the socialists. He doesn't have a majority in, in, uh, in the assembly, uh, but he's formed an alliance with the socialists who have joined him to agree in Article 155. So therefore, that way he's ensured uh, that the Catalans are, the Catalans and Pujimor are essentially isolated within Spain. They have mm. no major party um, who is even taking a, 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 a middle path regarding this. But the socialists have always argued <coughs> that we are prepared for a dialogue with, with the Catalans, which uh, Rohe hasn't uh, uh, completely repudiated, at least a socialist position. So you see the possibility of some sort of a, a negotiation going on. Mm. But I think it's pretty clear to uh, my sense is that Rohoy, being a representative of a conservative uh, right-wing party, uh, will see the dialogue as just a means to basically kill time until everybody forgets about this until the next round. Well, Pujimo will actually, of course, seek some form of, of, of greater autonomy. Mm. Um, and I think that is going to be the test that's going to happen, where the two sides will having maneuvered each other into these various positions. Um, and I think as Professor Sachteva has mentioned, the problem for the Catalans is they're relatively isolated. The mm. Pujimo has not been able to get, despite the police brutality, has not been able to get much sympathy outside of Spain. Yes. And definitely the rest of Spain. Uh, I've been struck by the fact a number of other parts of Spain which have had separatist uh, movements like the Basques and so on, have been relatively quiet. Mm. Um, they haven't uh, said very much in favor uh, of the Catalans or, or protested or said anything to favor them. Uh, there have been a few protests, but not mm. very much. So, that, so he hasn't been able to generate the kind of support I think he wanted to do outside Catalonia. Mm. So for right now, I would say the cards are largely, slightly more in Rajoy's favor than they are in Pujimo, but mm. we'll see how this plays out. Does it help that, of course, he presses these sedition charges mm. on the police head of, the, of uh, Catalonia? Uh, he's also arrested two separatist leaders yes, from there. Mm. Uh, does it help him to a certain extent, Rajoy, in trying to control that situation? Or is it going to create more unrest and violence on the streets? Well, you know, at a time like this, mm. when uh, the situation is so uh, confused and full of threats and counter threats and so on, uh, even in a relatively developed country, these are threats being bandied about. Uh, one really doesn't know whether they'll be followed up on. I mean, certainly if, if uh, the leader, Piedmont, is arrested on sedition charges, there's bound to be a backlash. Mm. Uh, there is a movement in Catalonia, there's no doubt about that. Uh, but I agree with my fellow panelists. Uh, this is, this is uh, uh, each side trying to strengthen its position uh, to start behind the scenes perhaps now and, and, and then later on in the public domain, uh, start negotiations which will end up in certain advantages for one of, for both, you know, each side looking for, uh, Madrid looking for a continuation of the status quo with minor modifications and Catalonia perhaps walking back from its demand for full independence, but 
with not minor but major modifications mm. and so on. So that, that will play out, I think, very quickly. I mean, the events have been moving so fast. Mm. Uh, so we'll, we'll just have we to wait and see. But do we see such charges, do you think, such charges being imposed on even Carlos Puigdemont for that matter? Do you see, you know, developments of that kind happening or is it, that taking It will too depend on how the situation risk? evolves okay. because sometimes, and we've seen this in God knows how many cases around the world, in Africa and Asia and in Europe itself, uh, in situations like this when, you know, it's called the law of unintended consequences. Mm. You do something and the consequences are certainly not what you expect them to be. Uh, I mean, the situation goes out of hand of... Uh, the control of the leaderships and one, 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 I, I'm sure the saner minds on both sides will not want that to happen. Uh, so uh, there, there, there will be, I think, people who will want the rhetoric uh, and the demands to be moderated for the dialogue to start, even if it's behind the scenes, and I'm sure that's going on. There will certainly be, as uh, uh, Professor said, uh, not overt, but, but behind the scenes action from other European countries, the leaders like, like Germany and France and so on, who will maybe not take sides, mm. but certainly take the side of, uh, you know, a dialogue, uh, you know, a toning down of rhetoric, sitting down on the table yes. and talking. Uh, but certainly what I said earlier uh, in my first intervention, there is a regional dimension to it. There is a European dimension to this. And Europe is watching very, very carefully. Mm -hmm. And I think behind the scenes, there's a lot of talk going on uh, because this has an echo mm. in a number of other European countries. Uh, absolutely. And uh, Professor Sajdeva, uh, is that why, is that the reason why the EU has, you know, refused to mediate in any way uh, when it comes to this particular situation? Uh, even though Carlos Puigdemont claimed initially to have said that, you know, he does have the support of a few EU leaders. But uh, even until today, we've got Donald Tusk, of course, who said that this is Spain's problem and they are going to solve it and we're not going to get into it. Uh, this is, of course, a calculated move because you really don't want to get into something and then you'll have to deal, it, deal with it in other countries as well. Well, I think European uh, leadership and the European elites, uh, they're in a very difficult situation. One is that, uh, you know, in the past, if you look at these kind of independent movements, uh, to some extent inside Europe and outside Europe, you know, most of the European leaders and their uh, legislatures in most of the countries, they were quite sympathetic to them. Um, now what is happening, something is happening with, with, the, with their own member state, uh, the, the issues of national sovereignty and territorial integrity are at stake. So, they have taken so far a kind of balanced kind of situ, you know, position on this, but I'm, I'm sure they are quite uncomfortable with the kind of scenes what you see on Barcelona. I mean, there is an independent movement which of course is there in uh, Catalonia. There was police brutality which is a fact. Now, for European leaders, um, ignoring those kind of images is not an easy task. Hmm. So obviously, I think for them, it's a, it's a, uh, you know, that's why I was saying that there must be, even if they are not saying anything directly, I'm sure there must be some pressure on Spanish leadership to find certain solution to this, uh, and things should not really go out of hand in Catalonia, which obviously will have implications for many other uh, these kind of movements within Europe as well as also. Uh, outside Europe, and if you look at their past position, whether on Kosovo uh, or uh, even uh, on Crimea, now those were, of course, one can always find different contexts. Uh, but you know, the situation is becoming very, very complicated for the European leadership also. Now, how Spanish leadership is going to manage, uh, that of course would be very crucial, uh, um, because Ultimately, if they, uh, if they do declare independence, or even if they do not declare clear-cut independence, but somehow in the next couple of days, I mean, uh, direct rule is kind of implemented. Mm. Now, what, what is the next step after this? You implement direct rule, then, uh, you know, the further uh, 
you know movement would be strengthened further with those kind of uh, you know uh, you know actions mm. and then what would happen next well, ultimately you can't have direct rule forever mm -hmm. you know in a couple of weeks or couple of months you again you have to have elections yes. and if after election these leaders again come back in catalonian parliament then you are back to square one where mm. you were before i mean you know it's the, so it means things are complicated mm. so how do they really resolve this nobody has a, you know we do not know at this point of time but i'm sure uh, they will try to find some kind of compromise and i'm i'm sure even catalonian leaders is also they also know the limits mm. so they are trying to find a way in which ultimately down the road maybe after two years three years five years some kind of commitment that we can have a legally binding referendum mm -hmm. which they may not get today you know step by step this is what perhaps i think their uh, their ultimate goal would be and while doing this now as a result of catalonian movement now even the in the right wing party is also becoming more stronger within mm. uh, spain which they were not before because now the nationalistic yeah. issue so you know this will have impact on the overall national politics yes. within europe mm. uh, within spain and then within europe mm -hmm. and of course then the european positions on these kind of independent movements outside europe as well now even russia has supported clearly that this is a spanish uh, you know internal affair mm -hmm. but immediately they have also pointed out that you know eu took very different position on mm -hmm. kosovo mm -hmm. and similarly the serbian uh, you know the president has also said the same thing interesting you bring up the right wing politics angle because uh, you know i was reading various articles on this and one of them in fact a few of them in fact were saying that this is not just a fight for nationalism there's something more at play here do you agree well the point is that spain the 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 present uh, fissures in spanish spanish politics arose from the 2008-2009 financial crisis um there had been you know catalan Cat as was mentioned the catalan independence movement has gone back to at least the 1930s uh but actually before 2008-2009 spain's economy had been booming the basques who had been the the separatist movement that had that had plagued spain for almost day for several decades and eta had actually been a terrorist organization uh, that the basques had uh, that had generated uh, out of that as opposed to the catalans who are otherwise uh, relatively uh, non-violent uh, had that even that movement had more or less you know, had given up uh, its uh, its attempts to form a separate uh, basque state mm. um, but after 2000 2000 uh, 2008 2009 you saw both within the uh, Sp spanish mainstream the rise of an insurgent insurgent party the podemos who was basically denounced both the socialists and the and the conservatives and argued for uh, a a completely a, a revamp of spain and a sort of left wing uh, um anarchist uh, sentiment uh, uh response uh but then you also see that catalan catalonia which is the richest province uh in spain uh we started to see a sense of uh, catalonian independence movement starting to get traction that we could have been better off if we'd been outside of spain um and so a lot of this this feeds into uh, that's fed into that point is that european eurozone is actually now beginning to recover economically mm -hmm. from that from the bond of great global financial crisis followed by the eurozone crisis And now if you look at the OECD figures almost every European country for the first time has has positive economic growth rates. Okay. Uh and all the major uh, European economies definitely uh are starting to see uh, an uptick in growth and the, definitely the G7 members. Um uh Brexit has been the only really uh destabilizing influence, but the impact of Brexit will be largely negative to Britain more than it will be to to continental Europe. So I think for for if I'm in Madrid um having made one major misstep in terms of uh, allowing uh, uh, waiting too long on the referendum uh if I'm Rajoy I will ex I will expect that the rest of Spain will react to me politically mm -hmm. I'll be in a much stronger position regarding Podemos uh in the next election uh but also if I can just delay and if the Spanish economic recovery takes place Remember other thing that that Pujimo has to face is that Catalonia is face he's facing economic pressure. Yes. Uh last count over 700 companies have relocated out of Barcelona. That's for right. For fear that they're going to be stuck in yes. a small regional state that is neither a member of the European mm -hmm. Union or a member of Spain mm. or or face uh, a political crisis of some variety. 
So you're seeing, and, and uh, tourist uh, uh, tourism, which is many ways one of the, sing one of the single dipped, largest, yes. has dipped uh, quite dramatically. So if I'm a Barcelonian, I'm sitting there thinking, this is, I'm not too sure this is worth it. Okay. So that as time plays out, it's, I would say would it be Rajoy's uh, favor mm. that he basically delay. Okay. Uh, the longer he delays, the economic pressures on Puigdemont are get higher. Mm -hmm. um, and his ability to isolate Puigdemont, whether in Catalonia or elsewhere, uh, will probably increase. All right. So there have been missteps, of course, from both sides, and we hope and uh, you know we'll we'll hope that eventually both sides, in fact, react to the developments at the moment, and a dialogue takes place, and things do settle down for Spain at the moment. Well, that's all the time we have, uh, gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining me on the big picture. Well, uh, Spain is a country that has seen three civil wars, in fact, in the last 180 years. So they definitely know how things unrest eventually develops into something bigger. And we hope uh, that at the moment, uh, the Mariano Rajoy government does decide on dialogue rather than taking stern actions. That's it for the moment. Thank you so much, though, for joining me on The Big Picture.